Have you ever wondered exactly why terrorists call out Allah Akbar three times before committing a terrorist attack? The reason is probably more complex than you've been led to believe. Let's get into that. Grab a seat. It's time for Counterterrorism Roll Call. Hello, I'm Holt Clark. Welcome to Counterterrorism Roll Call. Allah Akbar, or Allah Akbar, is a phrase known as the Takbir. It translates into God is great or God is greatest. It's used all over the world by Muslims in a prayerful and reverent manner. So I want to be clear. Today I'm talking about its use by terrorist groups, by terrorists and by jihadis, specifically as reported by Al-Qaeda and ISIS. Now this phrase was first linked to terror in the wake of 9-11. There was an instruction manual found in the luggage of three of the 9-11 hijackers. That manual told them when they made the decision they were to stand up and shout Allah Akbar, God is greatest, filling the hearts of unbelievers with fear. Now that's a very specific phrase using exact wording. It has a specific meaning in Islamic terrorism and as with most things you have to have a historical view and perspective to get a key understanding of how and why they're still using that today. So we go all the way back to the 7th century, to the time of Muhammad, to the Battle of Kabar in 628. Now this was a battle between the followers of Muhammad and a group of Jews living in a wealthy oasis area in the northwestern part of the Arabian Peninsula. As with most things in, in history, there's multiple versions to every story. An online source called Wikishia and a book named The Luminous Life of the Prophet, they portray the Battle of Kabar as a glorious battle between the underdogs of Muhammad and the outnumbered Jews who are fortified in fortresses and castles on elevated positions. But Al-Qaeda in their Inspire magazine, issue 16, and ISIS in their Debeek magazine, issue 6, give a very different version of this story. In their version, they say that Muhammad and his forces approached Kabar, and they saw the people of Kabar coming out with their spades to tend their fields. Muhammad cried out Allah Akbar three times, and Kabar is ruined. The eyewitnesses said they simply slaughtered the unarmed people. So why would ISIS and Al-Qaeda choose to use this version of the story in their propaganda. Both came out in late 2016, right after the 15th anniversary of 9-11. Now, Al-Qaeda specifically links the Battle of Kabar to two events in September of 2016, and that was the, the Jersey Shore Chelsea bombings and also the Minnesota Mall stabbings. And of that one, they say, in the name of the, in the same day, a man made takbir, Allah Akbar, and stabbed eight people in a shopping mall in Minnesota. So again, why use the version of unarmed farmers being slaughtered? Well, there's two basic reasons. The first is to explain who was killed and justify who will be killed. And the second is a way of solidifying or reinforcing that who will be killed. So in the first part, if you look at who was killed in Kabar, they were not viewed by the followers of Muhammad in their day, and they're not viewed by the terrorists of today as unarmed civilians. Inspire Magazine had a sheikh interviewed, and he was an Al-Qaeda supporter, and they interviewed him about this passage and how it relates specifically to lone jihad attacks. And he said, first of all, to reject Islam, to reject Allah, is to become a combatant infidel. He said, the mistake is to think that to be a combatant means you raise a weapon. No, no, you simply have to reject Allah. And it's permissible for Muslims to fight those disbelievers wherever they want. Now, most people would assume Americans mostly fall into that non-believer category, but there's actually a different category for us because the Sheik says of Americans, the infidels who raise their weapons against Muslims and who occupy their lands, fighting them is the priority. So. The story of Kabar and the use of takbir means really nothing to those of us who don't understand the historical preference. But to the terrorist group and to the jihadi, the takbir becomes an anchor phrase. And that is, it creates a link between the phrase and an emotional feeling. If I say back the blue, or Black Lives Matter, or 9-11, 
you have an emotional response to those phrases. And they use that specific use of takbir and they teach it in the training camps and they show it online and they teach it in the radical madrasas to the children and they specifically encourage and justify the killing of unarmed civilians. So saying Allah Akbar three times is a link to the history of the Battle of Kabar to the modern rationalization of killing unarmed civilians. It provides the jihadists with that final reassurance and justification of his actions right before he slaughters innocent people. So, was that why you thought a terrorist shouted Allah Akbar before killing innocent civilians? Let me know in the comment section below. While you're at it, if you've got an idea for an episode, put that in there as well. I'm Holt Clark. This has been Counterterrorism Roll Call. Until next week, be alert and be safe. Thanks for watching. Please visit our sponsor, PatriotThreads.org, and stay tuned for a special offer from them. Would you do me a favor and hit the like button? And if you haven't yet, subscribe. If you want to know more about me, go to my website, follow me on Twitter, or just run me on NCIC. I'll see you next week on Counterterrorism Roll Call. PatriotThreads.org is apparel with a purpose. Patriot Threads offers state-themed, game day to outdoor lifestyle apparel, like the new line of Southern Trout shirts, and introducing the new Back the Blue shirts. All are 100% printed in the USA. Are you looking for a new, exciting, profitable fundraiser? PatriotThreads.org would love to help. Go to their website for details. Use promo code ROLLCALL at checkout and you can save 20% on the sale. And Patriot Threads will donate 20% of the profits to the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund. PatriotThreads.org is a proud sponsor of the men and women of law enforcement.